that we can't ask billionaires to pay their fair share. And let's not keep the middle class from getting their tax cuts and their jobs. That's what's important. Madam President, thank you very much. I want to thank the leaders in this issue for letting me have this time to talk about this middle class attack that we see. Thank you very much. Madam President? The Senator from Utah. Madam President, uh, I'm going to talk about the amendment that I will ultimately file, uh, <coughs> linking TAA expansion to enactment of the three pending free trade agreements. Madam President, I, sen I, I will send an amendment to the desk in the near future uh, for uh, consideration. Uh, I would like to, uh, this, this amendment makes the effective date for additional TAA funding contingent upon the enactment of our free trade agreements with Colombia, Panama, and South Korea. It is unfortunate that this amendment is necessary. Supporters of this trade adjustment assistance bill tell us that TAA is a necessary precondition to submission of our pending free trade agreements. Necessary precondition by the President. The President and his supporters say that if TAA does not pass, the free trade agreements will never be sent to Congress for our consideration. Now, I find this logic disturbing. It basically boils down to this. Spend more taxpayer money on one of our pet tra trade priorities, or we will refuse to allow Congress to vote on trade agreements that we know will create jobs. And the administration has said it will create 250,000 new jobs. And by the way, at a time when they're really necessary, at a time when unemployment is over 9 percent, I simply can't understand why the President continues to hold up these FTAs and their consideration. Even today, we don't know if the President will actually send the FTAs to Congress if we pass trade adjustment assistance. So my amendment is very simple. It allows trade adjustment assistance to be approved, but it will only go into effect once the President submits the trade agreements to Congress. They are all approved and when they're signed into law. To me, this amendment is about fundamental fairness. If we are to meet the President's demands, we can at least ensure that our top priorities are addressed as well. I think it's worth taking a moment to review how we got here. In December 2010, the President announced that he had finally reached agreement with South Korea to renegotiate parts of that trade agreement. Touting the benefits of those changes, or these changes, the President seemed poised to immediately begin working with Congress toward its quick implementation, that is the implementation of the Korean free trade agreement. In February, Senator McConnell and I wrote to the President commending him for his strong support for the South Korea agreement, but also expressing disappointment that we did not see the same level of commitment to our pending free trade agreements with Colombia and Panama. At that time, we warned that further delay would mean lost market share and alienation of key Latin American allies. We also made it clear that each agreement would receive broad bipartisan support once the President submitted, them to, uh, submitted each agreement, uh, agreement to Congress for approval. Three days later, the President responded when Ambassador Kirk testified before the Ways and Means Committee that the President had directed him to immediately intensify engagement with Colombia and Panama to resolve the administration's outstanding issues with these two agreements. Senator Baucus and I welcomed that development when we wrote to Ambassador Kirk on February 14th and asked that he be prepared to provide testimony regarding what additional steps the administration believed Colombia and Panama should take and to provide a clear and expeditious timeline for moving both agreements through Congress. Shortly thereafter, in early March, Ambassador Kirk notified Congress and the uh, that the administration was ready to begin the technical work on the South Korea implementing bill with the intent to seek approval in the spring of this year. Senator Baucus and I welcomed this development, but again called for a specific timeline for resolution with the outstanding issues or of the outstanding issues with Colombia and Panama. During our March 9th hearing on the administration's trade agenda, I made it clear that the consideration of the South Korea agreement without a clear path for the Colombia and Panama agreements was simply not acceptable. 
and that, quote, should the President ignore the will of Congress and send the Korea Agreement without Colombia and Panama, I would do everything I could to make sure that those two agreements are considered at the same time as Korea, unquote. Now, shortly thereafter, in early April, the President finally took steps to fully engage with the government of Colombia, announcing an agreement on a labor action plan that would enable the administration to begin working with Colombia to achieve benchmarks that, if met, would then enable the President to submit the agreement to Congress. A few weeks later, Panama met one of President Obama's preconditions for consideration of their FTA when they approved a tax information exchange agreement and finalized additional modifications to Panama's labor laws. So there we stood in May, on the cusp of victory. Months of intense congressional pressure appeared to have finally resulted in an opportunity for Congress to consider our trade agreements with these important allies. But alas, it was not to be. On the cusp would, would, would the Senator just yield for a unanimous consent request? I think because uh, five o'clock is, uh, is coming, I think we need I'd to get it. I'd be happy to yield get without uh, losing my right to the floor. I, I thank, uh, thank my colleague, and, uh, and certainly uh, uh, when I'm, I'm done, uh, you, uh, you're next uh, to continue your, your comments. I ask unanimous consent that the pending McConnell Amendment 626 be modified with the dement language which is at the desk, and Senator Hatch or his designee then be recognized to offer Amendment 641, that the time until 5 p.m. be equally divided between the two leaders or their designees for debate on the McConnell Amendment is modified, that at 5 p.m. the Senate proceed to executive session to consider the following judicial nominations, calendars 169 and 170, that there be up to 15 minutes of debate on the nominations, equally divided in the usual form that upon the use or yielding back of time, calendar 169 be confirmed and the Senate proceed to vote without intervening action or debate on calendar 170. The motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate, that no further motions be in order to any of the nominations, that any statements related to the nominations be printed in the record, that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action, and the Senate then resume legislative session, that on disposition of the judicial nominations, the Senate proceed to a vote in relation to the McConnell Amendment as modified that there be no amendments, points of order, or motions in order to the McConnell Amendment prior to the vote on the amendment other than budget points of order and the applicable motions to waiver, that the amendment be divisible and be subject to a 60 affirmative vote threshold, the motion to reconsider be considered, made, and laid upon the table. Objection? So ordered. The senator from Utah. Senator's consent that I put my, uh, my, the remainder of my remarks in the record so that we can uh, meet this vote uh, pretty much on time. But before we do, uh, where's that number? I, I send, uh, I send uh, amendment number 641 to the desk and ask for its immediate consideration. The clerk will report. The senator from Utah, Mr. Hatch, proposes amendment number 641. I ask unanimous consent that the further reading be discussed. With that objection. Madam President, is prepared to proceed. Under the previous order, the Senate will go into executive session. And the clerk will report the nominations. Nominations. John Andrew Ross of Missouri to be United States District Judge. Timothy M. Kane of South Carolina to be United States District Judge. The Senator from Vermont. Madam President, well, I'm pleased that uh, we're going to confirm nominations today. They've been pending the Senate for 117 days with no reason or justification. More troubling still at a time when vacancies on courts around the country have remained at or above 90 for over two years. We should be acting on the other 27 judicial nominations reported favorably by the Judiciary Committee and ready for an up or down vote. 
Never during either Republican or Democratic administrations have I seen a time when nominations uh, proved unanimously by the Judiciary Committee then wait month after month after month to be considered on the floor. Nearly 170 million Americans are being made to suffer from vacancies as a result of these damaging delays. I'd ask my full consent. Uh, I ask consent that my full statement be made part of the record. Without objection. And, um, Mr. President, the um, So as I uh, will continue, because I'm not taking really time from anybody on this, the time has been reserved to me to talk some more about what has been happening in Vermont. I've spoken many times about my native state and what we went through with Tropical Storm Irene. Uh, I was born in Vermont. My parents, my family came to Vermont in the 1800s. We have Nothing in my lifetime has approached the devastation we've seen in our state. Vermonters continue to struggle to regain a sense of normalcy. Bridges, um, bridges, railways, roads remain damaged or wiped out. Many homes, businesses, and schools that were not entirely washed away need profound repairs. Farmers are struggling to salvage what they can of their livelihoods it's late September, Mr. President. In Vermont, October can bring snow. From amid the din and destruction debris of this horrific natural disaster come hundreds of heartening stories of either things I've seen firsthand or I've heard about Vermonters rising to the occasion, help their neighbors, their friends, even strangers. So we mobilized to recover. I saw a man shoveling out a a store. I asked him if it was his store. He said, no. I said, you live here? He said, no, I live two towns over. I said, you know the store owner? No. But, he said, I wasn't damaged. I wasn't hurt. He was. I would hope if I was hurt, somebody would help me. Now, Vermonters are known for our sense of community. We're known for our plenty of determination. Our state's people have proven their fortitude tenfold in the aftermath of this disaster. The Western Playhouse, a renowned playhouse, where actors from around the country come uh, in the summertime, had half of their theater and performance stage wiped out by the floods. Theater groups stripped the entire playhouse, set up a temporary stage so they could perform the upcoming show. The town meeting house in Little Pittsfield has been converted into a medical clinic. The Air National Guard dropped more than 14,000 meals ready to eat in town so that those stranded had enough food. In addition to those meals, many others donated meat and other goods, so there's plenty of food to go around. Schools have fundraised to help provide free hot breakfasts to students. Vermonters around the state have opened their homes to those that are lost theirs during their storm. Various fundraisers, including some who were college students, uh, classmates of my son in college, they have a group called Fish. They did their first live concert in years. They raised over a million dollars. I mean, just one thing after the But then there's also children having bake sales and car washes to raise money. One way where the indomitable Vermont spirit has endured is through the remarkable efforts of Vermont students and schools. School has started. I know, grandchildren going to school there. The schools faced tremendous challenges opening their doors just days after Irene descended on us. Many had to delay opening for a few days because school buildings were serving as community center for families who had lost their homes. Children had lost everything. In the storm. But let me show you a couple of examples. Students making the most. Look at this New York Times. Look at this New York Times picture, Mr. President. 
This is the Barstow Memorial School students in Chittenden. Chittenden is actually in Rutland County. It's down uh, in, the, in the southwest part of our state. They used this trail to navigate on their way to school. They were going to go to school. They were cut off. There's no road to go to school to get to the school bus. These parents, these children said, we're going to school. Look at the mud on this child's legs. Look at the people, look at them walking, carrying things. We're going to school. The washout route for it took weeks to fix. So these students slogged along a muddy trail to meet vans and cars half a mile away. They did whether it was raining or dark or cold or anything else. And these cars carried the students to buses to take them the rest of the way to school. Community members helped by chaperone the children on the trail. Whole community turned out. They stood there, they passed out snacks and refreshments. Now these students arrived at school, they were caked with mud. They didn't look like the children normally come to school, but they were proud of their twice a day routine. They made it to school. Moortown Elementary. This is one town over from where I live. I had a grandmother born there. They fared well, worse than many schools in the state. The building sustained damage when flooding overtook the school septic system. The principal and teachers came together. They organized a series of field trips to get the kids out of a devastated town so that they could continue their studies. They visited Shelburne Farms and Monshire Museum, just named two venues. And last week, with the school still closed, they met. They met. Look at that. Baseball field was covered by donated tents. This photos from the website of Vermont Public Radio. Teachers held classes. School's office operated from a pop-up trailer. Kids took well their new school schedule. Teachers there are glad to provide the support they need. Senator's time has expired. Mr. President, I'll put the rest of my uh, statement on the record, but I'll just say one thing, and I'd ask consent for one more minute. Without objection. We Americans are spending hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars to rebuild Iraq and Afghanistan. Let's spend some money to rebuild America for Americans. I yield the floor. The Senator from Iowa. Uh, we are on ju judicial nominees. Is that right, Mr. President? The Senator is correct. Yeah, I would like to, first of all, uh, yield whatever time he might consume before I speak to uh, the senator from South Carolina so he can speak about one of the judges that are up for nomination. Thank you very much. Senator from South Carolina. Thank you very much, Senator Grassley. Now I want to thank you and Senator Lay for bringing the nomination to the floor. Uh, very quickly, uh, colleagues, uh, this is a confirmation vote for uh, Timothy Kane to be a federal judge uh, in South Carolina. Uh, Tim was my law partner, so I just put my biases right out on the table. He has been a family court judge since 2000 in the 10th Judicial Circuit, dealing with the most complicated emotional issues in the law, and you will not find one person who's practiced before Tim Kaine as a lawyer will have anything other than high, high praise for the way he handles himself. Tim has been a prosecutor, a public defender. Uh, he was assistant uh, county attorney. Uh, he has a very distinguished record in the law, but more important, he's one of the most decent people I've ever met. His wife, Renee, his son, Martin, are the most charming, decent people you could ever hope to have. And I just want to thank President Obama uh, for nominating him. I appreciate the support from Senator Leahy and uh, uh, Senator Grassley working this nomination through the process. And this will be a big uh, win for the state of South Carolina and all who come, come before uh, Judge Kane. He is a total package of intellect, character, integrity, common sense, and judicial disposition and demeanor. And I could not be more proud. This is one of the 
probably the most satisfying moments that I've had as a United States Senator to get up and place, uh, recommend to my colleagues the approval of uh, Tim Kaine to be a federal judge in the state of South Carolina. And I just can't wait to, to, to see him uh, take over in our courts and administer justice. So Senator Grassley, Senator Lay, thank you both. And with that, I yield the floor. Mr. President. The Senator from Iowa. Today, the Senate will vote on the nomination of John Andrew Ross to be U.S. District Judge, Eastern District, Missouri, and also Timothy M. Kane to be a District Judge, District of South Carolina. Both seats have been deemed to be judicial emergencies. With these votes, we have confirmed 36 Article III judicial nominees during this Congress. Of these, 23 have been for such judicial emergency type districts. I am pleased that we continue to have great progress in lessening the burden of our overworked courts, particularly concentrating upon judicial emergencies. I'm somewhat surprised in the delay in bringing these votes uh, that we're going to have today to the full Senate. At the majority leader's request, Senate Republicans cleared these votes nearly two weeks ago with the anticipation that the Senate would vote on these nominees last Monday, September 12. So I hope everyone understands that these nominees could have been confirmed eight days ago. It was not re uh, the Republicans then holding up these for the last eight days. As I noted, we continue to make great progress in proceeding to President Obama's judicial nominees. These votes today are somewhat a milestone. They are the 99th and 100th confirmation of President Obama's uh, judicial nominees. As of today, the Senate has confirmed 63 percent of President Obama's judicial nominees since the beginning of his presidency. Earlier today, the Senate Judiciary Committee held its 14th nomination hearing. We have now heard from 82 percent of President Obama's judicial nominees this Congress. At this point in the 108th Congress, only 79 percent of President Bush's judicial nominees had received a hearing. We have also reported 69% of President Obama's judicial nominees compared to 67% of President Bush's. I am pleased with the progress and will continue to move forward with consensus nominees. So now I'd like to say just a few words about these two nominees. Uh, John Ross is nominated to be U.S. District Judge, Eastern District, Missouri. He presently serves as a circuit judge for the 21st Judicial District in Missouri. Appointed to that position by the governor January 2000, Judge Ross was retained by the voters in Missouri in, in retention elections of 2002 and 2008. During his tenure, Judge Ross was elected assistant presiding judge by his judicial colleagues in that circuit and served in that office from 2005 to 2009. He was subsequently elected as presiding judge and has served in that capacity uh, from 2009 to until now. Prior to his appointment to the state bench, Judge Ross served as a county counselor for St. Louis County and in St. Louis County's prosecuting attorney's office. He is a graduate of Emory University and the Emory School of Law. The uh, uh, American Bar Association Standing Committee on the Fed Federal Judiciary unanimously rated Judge Ross well qualified. Going to the next one, Timothy M. Cain is nominated to be U.S. District Judge for South Carolina. Judge Kane presently serves as South Carolina Family Court Judge in the 10th Judicial Circuit. South Carolina General Assembly elected him to this position in 2000, re-elected him in 2004 and 2010. In 2005, the Chief Justice of South Carolina's Supreme Court appointed Judge Kane to serve as Chief Administrative Judge for the Family Court of the 10th Judicial Circuit. By designation, of the Chief Justice, 
Uh, Judge Kane also served as acting associate justice for the South Carolina Supreme Court on several occasions. Prior to his judicial service, Judge Kane had a distinguished private practice in South Carolina. He maintained a general practice and assisted in representing several local governments and municipal clients. During his years of private practice, he also served the public sector. Judge Kane served as a part-time assistant public defender uh, with the with a, a Defender Corporation in that state. From uh, 1988 to 1990, he served as Assistant Solicitor General for the Solicitor's Office of the 10th Judicial Circuit, where he represented South Carolina in prosecuting child abuse and neglect cases and various criminal cases. In 1992, the County Supervisor appointed Judge Kane as County Attorney for that home county. He is a graduate from the uh, University of South Carolina and the University of South Carolina School of Law. The ABA Standing Committee on the Federal Judiciary unanimously rated Judge Kane qualified. I congratulate both nominees and uh, you will yield the floor. Under the previous order? Calendar number 169 is confirmed. The question is on calendar number 170. Yes, the yeas and nays. Is, is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Alexander, Ms. Ayotte, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Balkis, Mr. Begich, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bingaman, Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Cardin, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coons, Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken, Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. 
Mr. Graham. Mr. Grassley. This is Hagen. Mr. Harkin. Mr. Hatch. Mr. Heller. Mr. Hoven. Mrs. Hutchison. Mr. Inhofe. Mr. Inouye. Mr. Isaacson. Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski. Mr. Moran. Ms. Murkowski, <laughs> Mrs. Murray, Sir Nelson of Nebraska, Sir Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. 
Mr. Reed of Rhode Island. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Rich. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rubio. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Schumer. Mr. Sessions. Mrs. Shaheen. Mr. Shelby. Ms. Snow. Ms. Stabenow. Mr. Tester. Mr. Thune. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. Whitehouse. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Alexander, Ayotte, Baucus, Blumenthal, Brown of Massachusetts, Cantwell, Casey, Chambliss, Collins, Conrad, Cornyn, DeMint, Enzi, Graham, Grassley, Hatch, Heller, Isaacson, Johans, Kyle, Leahy, Lieberman, Luger, McConnell, Murray, Nelson of Florida, Portman, Reed of Rhode Island, Rubio, Schumer, Tester, Thune, Toomey, Vitter. No senator voted in the negative. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Udall of New Mexico, aye. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Aye. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Barrasso. Aye. Mr. Burr. Mr. Burr. Aye. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wicker. Aye. Mr. Cardin. Mr. Cardin. Aye. Mr. Crapo. Mr. Crapo. Aye. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Cochran. Mr. Cochran, aye. Mr. Sanders, Mr. Sanders, aye. Ms. Mikulski, Ms. Mikulski, aye. Mr. Risch, Mr. Risch, aye. Straight away. Mr. Inouye, aye.
Mr. Carper, Mr. Carper, aye. Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran, aye. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bennett, aye. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Akaka, aye. Mr. Wyden, aye. Mr. Manchin, Mr. Manchin, aye. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, aye. Mr. Blunt, Mr. Blunt, aye. Mr. Warner, Mr. Warner, aye. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, aye. Mrs. Hagan, Mrs. Hagan, aye. Mr. Coons, Mr. Coons, aye. Mr. Coates, Mr. Coates, aye. Mr. McCain, Mr. McCain, aye. Mr. Hoven, Mr. Hoven, aye. Mr. Webb, Mr. Webb, aye. Mr. Corker, Mr. Corker, aye. Mr. Bozeman, Mr. Bozeman, aye. Mr. Franken, Mr. Franken, aye. Mr. Inhoff, Mr. Inhoff. Aye, Mr. Shelby, Mr. Shelby. Aye, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Coburn. Aye, Mr. Udall, Colorado, Mr. Udall, Colorado. Aye, Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul. Aye. Mrs. Feinstein, Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Mr. Harkin, Mr. Harkin. Aye. Mrs. Boxer, Mrs. Boxer, aye. Mr. Durbin, Mr. Durbin, aye. Mrs. Shaheen, Mrs. Shaheen, aye. Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Whitehouse, aye. Mrs. Hutchison, Mrs. Hutchison, aye. Ms. Snow, Ms. Snow, aye. Mr. Carey, Mr. Carey, aye. Mr. Pryor, Mr. Pryor, aye.
Mr. Nelson of Nebraska. Mr. Nelson of Nebraska. Aye. Mr. Markley. Mr. Markley. Aye. Mr. Levin. Mr. Levin. Aye. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Aye. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown of Ohio, aye. Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, aye. Mrs. Gillibrand, Mrs. Gillibrand, aye. Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rockefeller, aye. Mr. Baggage, Mr. Baggage, aye. Mr. Kirk, Mr. Kirk, aye. Ms. Klobuchar, Ms. Klobuchar, aye. Mrs. McCaskill, Mrs. McCaskill, aye. Ms. Landrew, Ms. Landrew, aye. Ms. Murkowski, Ms. Murkowski, aye. Mr. Menendez, Mr. Menendez, aye. Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Lautenberg, aye. Ms. Stabenow, Ms. Stabenow, aye.
Are there any senators wishing to vote or change their vote? On this, the ayes are 99, the nays are zero. The nomination is confirmed. The Senate will come to order. Under the previous order, the motions to reconsider are considered and laid on the table. The President shall be immediately notified of the Senate's action, and the Senate will resume legislative session. The Okay. Senate will come to order. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, the Senate's not in order. The Senate will come to order. Please take your conversations out of the Senate. The Senate will come to order. Senator from Montana. Mr. President, I ask consent to be two minutes equally divided prior to the next vote. Without objection. Mr. President. The Republican leader. My, my amendment uh, on which we are about to vote would grant to the president something that no president has had since trade promotion authority expired back in 2007. Without trade promotion authority, there will be no other trade agreements. We all know that. If America wants to be the leader of the world in trade, we have to have trade agreements. What I have done here is offered trade promotion authority, what we used to call fast track, as an amendment to trade adjustment assistance. They have been historically linked going back to 1974. I think it is a big mistake for our country, even if we provide trade adjustment assistance, to just operate as if there are not going to be any more trade agreements in the United States. We used to be the leader in world trade. My party does not occupy the White House. I want the President of the United States, whoever that is, to have trade promotion authority because I'd like to see us have an opportunity to have trade agreements in the future. All of our competitors are taking advantage of the fact that we have not had a trade agreement for years. These three agreements were actually negotiated by the previous administration. So if you would like for this President or the next President, because this would extend TPA to the end of 13, so it will grant this authority to the next president, whoever that is, in addition to this president. If you think we ought to have another trade agreement sometime in the future for the United States of America, I would urge your support for my amendment. The Senator from Montana. Mr. President, um, I agree with much of what the minority leader said. I very much believe we should negotiate free trade agreements with other countries. I think we're behind the curve. Other countries are negotiating. Uh, we're being left behind. Uh, we should negotiate agreements that are good agreements. Uh, the uh, provision offered by the Senator from Kentucky, however, is the 2002 version. The, a lot's changed in the last 10 years. Um, environmental provisions, labor, China is, is a much, very much a competitor. And I think it would be unwise to extend TPA because so many could, there's I mean, changes in the world today that this version does not reflect. It has to be updated uh, to, the, to the current um, times. Second, um, if this amendment were to pass, then we wouldn't be getting um, free trade agreements. Uh, the Speaker has made it very clear he wants a clean bill. Then he'll take up TAA, this bill, um, which many of us support by a large, large margin. Then he'll take up the free trade agreements. So if, if this body wants the TAA and wants the FTAs, we have to vote against this amendment at this time. The question occurs on amendment number 626 as modified, offered by the senator from Kentucky, Mr. McConnell. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka. Mr. Alexander.
Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Baucus, Mr. Begich. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Blumenthal. Mr. Blunt. I did get you. Mr. Bozeman. Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Carden, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins. Mr. Conrad. Mr. Coons. Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Inzi, Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand. Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley. Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Heller, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhofe, Mr. Inoue, Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski. Mrs. Murray, 
Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Vitter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Alexander, Ayotte, Barrasso, Blunt, Brown of Massachusetts, Burr, Coates, Coburn, Cochran, Corker, Cornyn, Crapo, Dement, Inzi, Hatch, Hoven, Hutchison, Inhoff, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Kirk, Kyle, Lee, Lieberman, Luger, McCain, McConnell, Moran, Portman, Pryor, Risch, Roberts, Rubio, Sessions, Shelby, Thune, Toomey, Vitter, and Wicker. Mr. Bozeman, aye. Senators voting in the negative. Akaka, Baucus, Begich, Bennett, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Boxer, Brown of Ohio, Cantwell, Cardin, Carper, Casey, Collins, Conrad, Kuhns, Franken, Gillibrand, Graham, Harkin, Inouye, Johnson of South Dakota, Klobuchar, Cole, Landrew, Lautenberg, Leahy, Levin, Manchin, McCaskill, Menendez, Merkley, Mikulski, Nelson of Nebraska, Nelson of Florida, Rita of Rhode Island, Rockefeller, Sanders, Shaheen, Stabenow, Tester, Webb, Whitehouse, and Wyden. Mrs. Hagan, no. Mr. Warner, no. Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Chambliss, aye. Mr. Udall of New Mexico,
Mr. Udall. Mr. Udall of Colorado, no. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Durbin, no. Miss Snow, Miss Snow, no. Mr. Grassley, Mr. Grassley, I. Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed of Nevada, no. Mrs. Murray. Mrs. Murray, no. Mr. Heller, Mr. Heller, aye. Feinstein, Mrs. Feinstein, no. Mr. Schumer, Mr. Schumer, no. Ms. Murkowski, Ms. Murkowski, aye.
Mr. Carey. Mr. Carey. No. Maybe we should change the rules.